don't know why I have the ability to do it. It feels like it varies. Um, I did post the last one, by the way, in GitLab Unfiltered, just in case anybody needs to go back and revisit. Libra, you've got the first item if you want to go ahead and start. Yeah, thanks. I just uh, I just noticed from last agenda that you know we didn't address items seven and eight, so I was hoping to maybe talk about those. I don't know about addressing you know how we could address Nick's comment about. Um, let's see, is that seven here? I think it's eight. Oh, his was eight about about not going over. Uh, you know, I don't know what a good solution is here. I think maybe just moving the items to the next meeting. You know, works. It works for me at least. So I don't know unless there's like this pressing issues that we need to talk about that week. But, uh, good point, though. We do. I do feel like we go over. I mean, is it valuable to consider extending the time or or just move them over as you were suggesting? Yeah, I mean, we've gone through such like varying levels of um, participation. It's like some weeks it's like yeah. one person or two people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would be okay with trying like an extra 15 minutes and seeing if that helps. I think we initially started at an hour. Right. And then we went down to 30. So maybe, maybe 45 minutes would be a better sweet spot for the number of people that we have joined. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I just checked my calendar. I could do that as well. So, mm -hmm. or rather, I guess technically it'd be 40 minutes if we're doing the smart meetings or whatever it is when we're yeah. Yeah, and like a little bit early. So, um, I guess. We can try that. I don't know who, again, we run to the, who gets permission to edit it? I'm like scared to hit the edit button. I don't know. And I, I have two versions of it on my calendar. One is red and one is blue, which I'm guessing one is like a shared calendar and one is not. And I, I'm afraid I'm gonna edit the shared one. And maybe this, Mike was originally the one that created it. So it's even weirder, but it looks like maybe I did the updated version. So let me see if I can change it. Uh, so that's weird. It shows us 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, is that because it must, it must be from a different time zone? Maybe. I, I'm seeing what you're seeing too, because I clicked on the, the edit as well just to check it out. And oh, it's, still yeah, gonna it's showing thing. UK time. That's why. Weird. So that's probably Daniel's time. Let's do this in following events. Certainly not Libor's time. <laughs> yeah, are, where are you, Libra? Are you in Hawaii? I feel like I heard you were at one point. Yeah, I'm in Maui. Yeah. Are you there long term or? Yeah, I'm like permanent, permanent nice. location. Yeah. Wow, fantastic! Very nice. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna permanently move into his garage. Right. We'll we'll come visit soon. <laughs> I yeah, feel like Alexis nice. goes to Hawaii every year with family. I don't know if that's coming up soon, but I don't know if she'd be in your neck of the woods soon. Did that yeah, I talked to her about that last year, yeah, when she was out here. I was just about moving here, so mm -hmm. I wasn't out there yet. Did yeah, that when, when I was there like a few months ago, um, Libor had literally left the same day that I arrived. Can you, oh. like, you go to Germany or something? Yeah, I was going back to Czech for a while, yeah, for, for the holidays. Oh. Oh, crazy. <laughs> uh, but Maria, we just yeah. missed each other. <laughs> Two ships yeah. passing in the night. <laughs> yeah. Did that change the time for you all? Yes. Okay. It did. Okay. Good. For me. Yeah, that was good. Yep. Yeah. Thanks um, for Daniel, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I'm connected to my phone now, so we'll see how okay. long this lasts. For some reason, my internet. Are you this uh, Holly was kind enough to extend the meeting. Um, we're going to try doing like the 40 minute meeting length and see if that helps with um, the time constraint that we've been feeling. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to 45 after. Is that what we were planning or was it 40 after? Because I think we were technically at 25 oh, after yeah. before. Yeah, that's fine with me. That's fine with me as well. If we need to wrap it up a little earlier, we can. If not, we'll have five extra minutes. Okay. Um, so just, uh, yeah, so Daniel, just to recap for you, we were just extending it, kind of having the conversation of do we need a little more time or do we just roll over the conversations from week to week? So that's just kind of what happened there. Um, and let me see if there's, is there anything else that I'm missing from Libor's thread? 
Um, uh, we could do Alexis's feedback request async. I hadn't gotten to that one last week, um, but since we have you here, Holly, why don't we do yours? Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So for this one, uh, and let me find the issue. Um, I was curious about which one is this? Create a new task for Markdown, I believe. Nope, show issue. I think it's this one. Let me just add in the issue real quick in case anybody wants to review it. Um, maybe while you're looking that up, I could ask uh, a question that I recalled from last week that I meant to ask but forgot to. Mm -hmm. Is there a um, unique slug or like character to delimit a task? Like we use the um, hashtag or the ampersand um, mm -hmm. for like epics and issues. Is there going to be one for tasks or is it just going to reuse the I think there will be. Sign? Yeah, there okay. will be eventually, but I think that's still an ongoing discussion because I believe that will mm -hmm. be tied to work items as a whole, since a task is really kind of the first version of a work item. So just to give, I don't remember if I went into this last week or not, but just to give a little background, work items has changed where the first version of a work item we are going to offer is a task, which would be a child element of an issue. Um, and this actually, this particular, let me share my screen really quick. This particular uh, situation is, um, it's actually not necessarily tied to that. It is indirectly, but in this case, what we're exploring initially is just uh, surfacing more information as it relates to an issue. So if you copy the path of an issue and paste it into a comment or a description, it resolves right now, like it changes when you hit submit or save, it resolves to just show the issue ID as a link and you can hover over and it shows a tool tip with a title or you can click it and it goes to the issue page. So one of the things that we're exploring is is there value in showing more information as it relates to that issue? And I think the long-term goal will be to show different versions of work items, um, but it's kind of surfacing right now as issue types. So in option A here, this is just showing um, a couple of different versions of how this might look. And the way that people can control this is by going to, do I have this issue handy? They can go into the markdown and add a plus beside the issue ID. Let's see if we have a screenshot here. Um, I don't think that we've got one necessarily here, but they add a plus to the uh, issue ID in the markdown. And when they do that, it shows the title. That's currently what the MR does. But one of the things we're exploring is should it show the title? Um, should it show the status? Uh, should it show the, the comment here associated with uh, the information? Or is there more or less detail that people would like to see as it relates to the issue? So what I'm trying to think through is, I believe that context is very important here. I, I don't wanna just show people three different ways to view this information and tell them what's going on. I want to understand when they would find additional information useful and what they would want to do with that information. Um, and so this option C is kind of combining a couple of ideas where we're showing the type of the work item. And initially we're offering issue, incident, and task, um, which issues and incidents are just going to be what they are currently. The ID associated with it and the title, and then separately, if there is a related comment um, and or if it's closed, you see that. Another question is what shows when you hover? Um, and is this order, does it make sense to show it in this order? Or should we put maybe uh, you know, the, the ID at the end and show the title first? So I'm trying to think through how to test this but first and foremost, how to clarify to the end user the context and, and really try to understand the context myself, because I feel like when people would most want to understand an issue uh, that they're not directly looking at is maybe when someone has mentioned one in a conversation, like in a thread, 
or in maybe the um, details of an issue. And so in that case, you might hover and say, I wanna know more about this related issue and not meaning related as in the actual feature related, but you know, there's a relationship between it in some way. Um, so let, I know that was kind of rambling. I'm trying to just kind of get myself caught up as well on, on what all we did with this last week, but any questions and, and any thoughts? I'm happy to explain a little bit more if it would be helpful. This is the I way. I question, Holly, about yeah. I want to see this, uh, I guess, this list of checkboxes in context, like what is it above or below? Yeah, that, that's a, that's exactly what I was going to ask, too, is uh, because I'm seeing lorem ipsum, and I was wondering, like, are those, would those also be issues or what? Yeah, how is that? How does that compare to the other ones? You mean the links? It could be, it could yeah. be anything. So just imagine, like, a in the description or in a comment, someone puts the markdown for checkboxes. Right. Um, I probably think the area you would most commonly see this use would be like in our OKR issues when there are like seven checkboxes for each group or each stage. And sometimes they link to an issue, but sometimes they're just like a task for one of the people to take on. It could really be a mixture of things. Right. Is that fair, Holly? Exactly. It's exactly that. It's uh, just our current checklist feature. Um, okay. And then each of these items is uh, just either a link to an issue or to eventually a work item or some other type, okay. or it could just be a plain link to something else entirely. Um, mm -hmm. But when you do copy and paste a link to something currently to an issue or to an MR, it resolves very much like this, where it just shows yeah. the ID and then the symbol associated with it. So we're exploring showing a little bit more information. And that might be, again, the title. Uh, it might be to show an icon, to show the status, um, or maybe to show the type of element, and then also uh, potentially a label. We wouldn't show both a label. Well, we might show a label and an icon. That's something else we're thinking through. This icon here, though, is being used currently to show open and closed for issues. So we would probably have to change that um, a little bit. And I, it, it's probably redundant also if you're showing the, the status down here as far as closed or not. I do like this option C mm -hmm. with the little badges because then you know what the thing is. What do you think about the view though as a whole? Like Gabe, Gabe and I talked about it and my concern was that it was going to really kind of clutter up the list and make it hard to just skim through, but maybe people are okay with that sort of friction as long as it provides the value that they need. I would want to see how often these kinds of lists are generated and what content is being linked to. So if it's like 99% of the time it's just issues mm -hmm. and everyone's list just says badge issue, you know, with an issue ID and then some title, mm -hmm. is there any value in that? Because we already know it's an issue, right? Because that's where you but like then tasks then that's don't too exist much information yet. overlap. Yes, tasks. yeah. So like, I think today it would be mostly just issues, maybe epics, but the other things aren't either used much or they don't exist yet. So we wouldn't be able to quite discern when tasks would show up. I guess we could like look at our own metadata. Um, might be a little bit hard to tell. But I think about like our UX research issues and task lists, like sometimes it's like, where's the issue for your recruiting request? But then the next thing is like, create a script. Like you don't need an issue for that. You just gotta go, go write the script. Oh. I kind of want to just get rid of the, the ampersand or the pound sign and use like an icon instead to designate <laughs> issue, incident or task. And that might actually be solve both problems, but then you have to, define you know or explain this is an issue this is a task this is an incident and I come up with new iconography yeah I, I think it's interesting that you say that because i remember when i first started with gitlab just struggling a little bit to remember like what thing is associated with what type of thing and i wonder Hashtag, exclamation point <laughs> ampersand yeah, exactly i remember all of them exactly but it's also like that for jira it's also like that for github like I didn't realize that was an established pattern in the engineering world. Mm -hmm. 
But, but uh, we, yeah. you see, one of the challenges that we're having in plan is that our primary user is the product manager. And mm -hmm. we receive a lot of feedback from product managers saying, I feel like this product is created for someone who has a strong technical background. And I don't always feel like one of the most um, interesting pieces of feedback I heard one time from a product manager was, this is a product I can use that I feel like was built for somebody else. <laughs> So they mm. feel like maybe it's built for engineers, but they can yeah. use it and they kind of have to use yeah. it sometimes, but it, it's maybe overly complicated. They need the engineers to do the work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, well, Holly, you're asking about some feedback on how to approach validating the solution. Mm -hmm. I, I think my first clarifying question that I wanted to ask was, which unknown are you most concerned about? So like getting the answer to. That's a great question. Um, the one that I'm most concerned about is, is this going to be valuable to show additional information? Um, and if so, when and, and why, which I know is a big question, but that's kind of the thing that's sticking in my mind the most. I don't like to add to the UI unless I am confident that it is going to add value because we already have so much stuff on our pages. Um, however, I can see there being value in preparing for tasks coming down and the fact that we will offer people the option to convert a checklist item to a task as part of our MVC for tasks. So I think that this is initially going to be related to that, um, but I don't want to just add more stuff to the UI unless I know that it is valuable and I want to understand is this the time that it's valuable? When is it valuable? And why is it valuable in those various places and locations, as well as what else is going to be affected by this decision? Is this going to impact MRs and incidents? I assume we would have to do the same setup in e each of those areas. Um, and are they going to then also adopt this, this process of showing title or status or whatever when their links resolve for epics and MRs and things like that. So that's mm -hmm. where it becomes a bigger question. Um, I think in the issue, a lot of the dialogue seems to be around just the interaction and the UI, which to me is the easier discussion to have. I just want to be sure, sure that that it's really adding value um, and that I understand the context of when and why people might want this. So how how to test that? Because I can yeah. show them an issue in a thread or in a description and ask them to tell me a little bit more about it, but it doesn't necessarily tell mm -hmm. me why they would need to know that information and when that information mm -hmm. is most valuable. Ooh, yeah, that's all, that's all really good stuff. I'll share my thoughts and I'd love to hear more from like Lee Bourne Daniel on it too. Um, I think it can be really easy to over bias the focus on can you discover which of these items in a list is a task versus an issue, which I think is like an important distinction. Mm -hmm. However, like what we hear time and time again from our survey results is there's so much information in GitLab. Okay. Um, so I almost lean towards the fact of seeing how little you can get away with and then start like being more solutionized here, starting with that very, very small thing and then waiting for people to say, I, I'm having a hard time distinguishing between issues and tasks in the list. Um, so if it was simply just that they look the same, but when you hover over them, the popover distinguishes between an issue versus a task. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it's still discoverable. It's just maybe not screaming at you as you're scanning the page, right. which I realize maybe has some accessibility challenges with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's maybe where I would start is seeing like, what's the main task? that we would assume users are trying to do in an issue or a merge request um, in an epic. And then like, what's the smallest UI change that we could get away with that still like meets good like design principles, but right. also is at least creating some, you know, distinguishing feature between them without like adding an icon and a badge and a new anchor tag and um, additional details. Like just because we end up in a situation where there's so much in the UI and now we've created more for the user to think through, which I know is a big thing for you and um, Alexis too. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I would much prefer to start simply. And I always tell my students this too, start simply because you're always going to add in stuff later. 
And it's harder to remove something from the UI when people have become used to seeing it, even if it doesn't necessarily provide value, it, it shuffles up their routine for things to be moving around and changing. So I would prefer to go simply and add on as needed rather than show all the things and then potentially find that they're not valuable, but now they're there and you gotta have the conversation of removing. So thank you so much for that feedback. I, I personally, I agree with you. I would love to hear what Libor and Daniel think as well, if you all have thoughts on it. All right, I'll go, I'll go ahead. I, I had a question. I was wondering uh, if it would be better, you know, instead of showing some of the lorem ipsum in order to get better feedback, maybe just set it up in more of like a story, just put it into a little bit more context, like show me what an actual list would look like maybe in an that issue. Is a, that is I a great I think that idea. might be helpful too. Um, thank you, Austin. For that's kind of the problem that I had. Like I was going to ask, because I asked, could I see this in context? And I think that was what I was trying to get to. Okay. Um, not just this, but like in the bigger picture, like within the whole issue, I, I don't think it would add much, but it would definitely help put you already into the, the, the place where it should be mentally. Mm -hmm. um, just in terms of what uh, Austin had said about reducing the complexity first, that's really fair to say. I, my the, the thing that I had brought up earlier about the icons instead of the, the pound or the other symbol in front, that could help. But um, I would say that's up for debate. I'd want to ask users if you switched that out with an icon or something, would that kind of help this process like as an MVC or something? I wonder- Do you think adding like a title or the full title instead of just saying what it currently shows like, the pound, the number, and then like parentheses comment perhaps um, could be more helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I, I kept wondering as you were talking about the icon, if we could take advantage of the existing use of icons, but present them as more of an icon. So the hashtag, but as, as more of an icon than just a text-based symbol that's tied to it. Um, but I don't know if that would confuse people and if they would gather that you have to include that icon at times when referring to that type of thing. Like if you're wanting to search for an issue as a related issue, I believe you have to start with the hashtag for it to locate it. So there could be times, I don't remember if we, I think we actually built the hashtag in, so maybe you don't, but. Um, There's one other thing that I know that there's a weird behavior is that you can actually just put the hashtag and then the number Mm -hmm. and it will auto populate the visual or the link mm -hmm. versus if you just copy paste the whole link it'll actually truncate the whole link to just be the hashtag with the number mm -hmm. so there's a weird like behavior there that's not assumed or understood like i saw that on an issue earlier i tried to edit the link i was like wait a minute it's not a link it's a pound and a number within the uh, markup i was like oh yeah i forgot we could do that <laughs> so when you are you saying that when you were uh, addressing something to another issue, like in a discussion or in the description, it would result in two different situations. If you just did hashtag two and looked for issue two versus copying and pasting the whole URL, the results were different. No, no, I'm not talking in terms of like a search or results. I'm talking about the, um, the mental interaction. Okay. Uh, um, as being like, you can just type hashtag two, or you can type out the entire URL, Got but it. they both visually show hashtag two in the, uh, rendered page, which is kind of weird. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. So maybe would you Way convert it from markdown? Right. Right. Would you have an expectation that it would convert differently depending on the different approaches to search or apply? I'm not sure about the search. For me, I don't understand why you would just type in a hashtag and a number. Mm -hmm. um, that's the assumption as I know exactly what, what issue it is. It's like, okay, fine. But how often does that occur versus doing a copy oh, paste to that? Mm -hmm. And then um, where the copy paste makes more sense in a normal use case scenario, like I'm looking at this screen, I'm gonna copy that link off the top of that bar, then paste it over here. Mm -hmm. um but that's, that's like, really interesting I Daniel yeah. I've um I like the opposite I like rarely ever grab the full URL and I just grab the 
anchor and dump it into my markdown because it doesn't make it as cluttered as I'm like writing it. The context, this is what I'm saying context. is that I'm, yeah. I want to understand the, the different ways that people might need to use it and, and why for those differences. Yeah. I'm with you, Daniel. I, I tend to I... just copy the whole URL and paste it because there's, I guess, some sort of quiet fear in me that I'm going to be in the wrong project and get the wrong ID because I'm in a different project than what I normally would be in. But I don't know that most of our users would have that problem because they're probably only associated with one or two key projects and we use, you know, a few different ones for different things. It's interesting. Yeah. And then also like, how does that behave whenever things change in the future for like, so example, if you did like pound two, mm -hmm. then how would it show like if we change the group or the project to something else mm -hmm. um like what we did the migration from ee or ce or something like that so all the links change everywhere um does that cause anything to go wonky um mm. that's just my ideas that i'm throwing out in terms of like using this shortcut and like i said like i didn't even remember the shortcut existed that you could just type hashtag two and it would be there you know who also deals with a non-issue, non-GitLab issue link? Hmm. Libor with Jira references. That's true. Those do show up as hyperlinks. Yeah, good call, Austin. I forgot about that one. So hmm. how did those show up in, in the UI? Does it just show up as a link? And does it show any additional information? I don't know, actually. I have to, I'd have to double check on that. Yeah, I've been using that in a while, so. <laughs> I can look into it. Yeah, as I well. want I to say it's just a link and i think it may be the popover or something says like open in jira um i don't I know if it's quite remember <laughs> it way, might does, not be <laughs> does this need to be marked as private because we're mentioning does it matter i don't think so that's a feature in gitlab itself um just the way that we use the jira integration we format the hyperlinks a specific way right um so I think that I think what we okay. do now thinking about it, what we do is we check if, if it is a Jira ID in the beginning, because you have to reference the I prefix the your issue with the ID or the branch that you're on. So um so once that's prefixed, you know, we could do a lookup and see, okay, that's a Jira issue. And all we do is just make we just make it a link. And it, we link to that Jira issue. So I I have a, a request then um, going back to kind of the context because I want to be mindful of time, but if any of you at any point today or sometime in the next couple of days, if you think about it, um, if you find yourself needing to know a little bit more about an issue or a linked object from somewhere in the product, would you mind just making a note or just shooting me a slack as to what information you would find valuable when trying to understand that and, and maybe a little bit about the situation. I hate to give you all extra work, but that's the only way I can think of maybe collecting some of that data when it's happening in that context is just to say, hey, if, if you find yourself thinking about it, I'd love to hear details about that experience. Thank yeah, you. definitely. Uh, I'm glad you bring that up, Holly. Actually, the work I'm doing right now on the for the Slack integration, I have, I'm doing something similar to a uh, similar exercise where I'm trying to figure out what's the most minimal kind of thing we could show about an issue once it gets unfurled in Slack. Mm -hmm. It's still useful. So, well, in Slack, so, yeah, is I'd love to hear what too. all the stuff you collect. What's that? I will. Well, Slack is interesting too because it actually shows a little preview of the conversation, which I find super helpful. And I, I wonder if people would want that kind of detail eventually. Um, so that's something else that we could even explore. Uh, somebody was telling me the other day that they hate when they need to know uh, if someone's just responded with like a yes or no or looks good, you know, and they don't need to see a full context, but just having that detail without having to leave their current context would be great and showing a little preview could help with that. Um, I don't want to hog up all the time. I know we're, we're, we've got, I guess, a few minutes left, but uh, thank you all so much for the feedback. I appreciate your help. I don't think there's anything else on the agenda, is there? Nope. So oddly enough, when we extend the time, we actually wrap up on time. <laughs> we have we could, uh, today. There's two people that are out already, so. That's true, that's true. Yeah. We could go back and just talk through uh, Alexis's issue. 
Sure. Um, Holly, since you already had your screen presenting, would you mind presenting it anyways? Mind. Yeah, I've already got Thank the uh, issue up here. Sweet. Um, and did she have a mirror or anything, mural rather, for us to look at? I don't think she said just leave any feedback about this issue she's tinkering on. So I'm not sure if it's a, a thing specifically, but um, there are lots of designs in the design section. Um, there's a Figma okay. board linked in the description. Oh, wow. Okay. So this one, uh, and I'm going to just kind of review it as I state my understanding of it. This is related to um, having, so currently we have epics which have child elements. And this is also something we're looking to solve with tasks. We repeatedly had requests from users that they want more things that have child elements than just epics. Um, and so eventually work items will have their own child elements. And the first kind of phase of that is going to be the tasks being a child element of an issue. Um, and part of what Alexis and Kristen are working on is designing that relational aspect and how the different relationships surface in the UI and what the connections are and how everything is impacted by that. Um, so proposal NBC expose them in the UI at the namespace level. So this is also related to, uh, is that Nick that's working on the namespace stuff? I think. Um, and I believe they've been working together on that as well. Current is Epic and workspace. I'm sorry. Do you mean workspace or namespace? <laughs> you know, I had that namespace question is, actually. Namespace is just the, the code for the code container. So every project group or workspace is a namespace. So is it appropriate to say workspace or namespace here? Or is that unclear? Like is that uh, probably the namespace. So here will be because it, you're describing project or group and okay. the container that's called a project or group in the code is actually a namespace. And tell me again what the difference is. Oh, sorry, Austin. Oh, workspace uh, oh yeah, I think Daniel is going to clarify. Yeah. Yeah, workspace is just the thing that we want to expose to the top level. OK. Uh, but it will also be a namespace. It's just namespace is a container and it's generic. Mm -hmm. And is the workspace kind of the place where all of the like permissions would be defined moving forward? I remember. Yeah, top level possibly. object container. OK. Yeah. Yeah, the way, I, the way I think about it is like some of those admin features that are driving the experience of a namespace will kind of like live in the workspace. Mm -hmm. But like Daniel said, I guess technically speaking, the workspace itself is a namespace that can contain other namespaces, which we more traditionally would refer to as groups and projects. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what, Nick's showcase is coming up in like a week and I bet you he'll help clarify that one. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, I love that she put this disclaimer in, by the way, I feel like everything related to work items should have this like, just FYI, this is just used for conversational purposes and not necessarily a final version of the design work. Um, so I'm going to just for time's sake, I'll just focus on the MVC solution here. It looks like there are a ton of designs, which I, I am always blown away at how amazing Alexis is at showing her design process. Um, it's just always really fascinating to see how she documents things and organizes things and super helpful uh, to me as well. So do take some time to maybe look over that. So it looks like she has this broken up by tier, starter, premium, and ultimate. And I'm guessing I can click on these. Um, and we've been having problems this morning with slowness. At yeah, Lincoln. GitLab is really slow right now for me. I don't know if it is for anybody yeah. else. No, I met with uh, Lee Ticket before this, and he said that we okay. were in, in the red on something. So it, it seems to have gotten a little bit better. Wah, wah. I know. Uh -oh. Did I slow okay. down? Am I back? Nope. Nope, nope. You're good. Okay. You're all good. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at... Looks like starter premium and ultimate. I don't know what the little version is. I guess it's just maybe mobile. Um, and I'm a little gonna... little baby. Little yeah. baby. I think it's her, her mobile <laughs> view. <laughs> um, I'm trying to just understand quickly the differences though. I'm guessing it's just showing that for the lower tiers, there's a notice here that lets you know that you know you can do more if you upgrade. 
Um, mm -hmm. So there is a default hierarchy. This is just showing a relationship, I guess, currently. You have your epic that's premium, you have a child epic that's ultimate, and then you would have an issue that seems like current. Then you would have a task, which is the lowest tier. Um, an incident also has nothing below it. Same with requirement and test case. But my understanding is that eventually you can have a work item that could have any of these four elements as child elements, and then we'll continue to add on. And eventually users can create their own versions of work items and define them as what they want, give them uh, icons, you know, to yeah. address them as they want to in the UI. Oops. My first thought is it's really intriguing to me that we would dedicate a page in the app to this um, as opposed to like just having it in documentation. What do you mean uh, dedicate a page to this? Do you mean? So if, like, I feel like I'm getting off those pages. I can learn how different components of GitLab relate to each other. Mm -hmm. Like uh, an issue can live within an epic or an epic can live like within an epic and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, but there's a, a hierarchy kind of mapped out. I don't know if maybe if there's going to be an interaction to change your hierarchy at all, mm -hmm. but it feels to me more like a documentation page where it's like educating you on the information architecture of GitLab. Yeah. So I guess I was surprised to see that more in the GitLab page itself. But like you said, I may be missing some context here. Well, I see what you're saying, though, because uh, I guess I made an assumption when I first looked at this, that this was just kind of maybe her documenting for our discussion purposes. But now that you mention it, you're right. Maybe this is a proposal, mm -hmm. kind of like an empty state document, maybe that shows. Because I saw it in the navigation. That's what I thought. Yeah. But... Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I can see that as well. Um, well, let me just go back, which I, <laughs> I have an issue, by the way, in case I don't know if anybody's interested in this or not, but every time I open an image that is not in design management, it opens in the same window. And that makes me crazy because sometimes I'll close it thinking that it has opened in a new window. So I have an issue out there to change that so that it always opens them in a new window. And these are going to probably move kind of slow. what this one maybe is yeah I'm, I'm also kind of slowly going through some other ones there's one that has like a the available work items um and you can toggle on whether or not they're visible with some promotional stuff telling you like what's coming soon so that feels like a maybe like a settings page where you can customize the look and feel of your mm -hmm. gitlab namespace or Maybe it is a workspace configuration option. Um, but I think it's just trying to help you understand how are you configuring your environment so that your team is collaborating the way that you want. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, always a challenge. I think it's, uh, yeah. Which one is it? Um, I think it's the one in the top right corner. Right here. The work I'm big, yeah, with seven comments. Yeah. It's the one that I'm checking out. Um yeah, it's it's tricky. Is it moving this slow for you? Yes. Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. Um, it could be that there are a lot of images and maybe that's also slowing down. Could be. The issue there, itself, might be large, maybe. there might be large images too that could be adding to mm -hmm. it. I don't know why my zoom is way over here. All right. So Let's see. Um, work out. Yep, that looks like settings to me. And this is showing the different types currently. And this is, I guess, showing if something is a parent, sibling, or child, or maybe that it has. Yeah, so like the, this indicates, if I understand this correctly, it seems to indicate that it test case can have a child which is not what was on the other page so maybe i'm misunderstanding that oh, project level object fitness under parent satisfies requirements yeah that's possible she had maybe. deviating thoughts maybe in one case it should be or maybe in another case it's not supposed to be yeah that makes sense and it is i think it actually is a child element of a requirement um in the visibility so that would be the settings 
I'm curious what's in this. Do we name general actions that looks like related to that aspect coming soon features and tasks? Yeah, so that looks like just settings information. I think this type section there for me is still a little confusing, but the description helps. Visibility is clear to me, menu is clear. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts about this view? <clears throat> Just gonna kind of click through. And just looking at it, I'm just thinking: is that is that component that it's that everything's housed in? Is that a table or is that a list or? I think it's from a, a foundational standpoint. You know. Oh, that's what a good question. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. It, it looks more tabular to me in terms of structure. Oops, I clicked the arrow and it just just now loaded. Um. I'm also not sure what the default here stands for. I wonder if that's just, I don't know what that means. I'm curious about that too. But do we have, I feel like we have setups like this currently in settings that are kind of looks like a list, but probably in terms of You're how- You're probably thinking of integrations. Oh, maybe. Which is what Libor works on. And yeah, he's I was going to say, this doesn't look like any settings specifically. It's more like this feels just like a documentation page. It does. Well, but you do have the ability to turn it on and off, it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you get you get some awareness of what your configuration looks like. So mm -hmm. I guess like integrations as in a comparison, you can find out, have we integrated with Jira? Are we integrated with any of the other apps like Slack or something? Um, you can see which ones are turned on, which ones are off. Mm -hmm. So I guess as we give more customization options to GitLab users, the challenge then becomes it's not as easy to document because we can't just say this is the single source of truth if users are defining what that truth is. Mm -hmm. That's this is interesting. We're down. We've only got a minute left. But in this case, it looks like there's a separate hierarchies tab. And I don't know if that would just be information or if you can actually somehow change and manipulate hierarchies associated with work items here. But that's really interesting. I'm curious about that, if that's functional or just information. How do you, how would you change um, that kind of detail at the namespace level? Like do oh, we, have we wow. Into all that? yet to be defined. I had a good meeting with Nick, Nick last week just talking about all that. And um, I'll just briefly communicate his sentiments is uh, it's all still up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, like the technical back end of things are being more discussed of like, how do we actually like create this space where mm -hmm. things can live? Um, but then like how we actually navigate those things or how we move them into this workspace or the namespace um, attribute itself. Mm -hmm. yet to be really defined exactly. So I don't know, answer your question. I don't know if Nick knows that. Um, I think they're still trying to kind of figure out how do we merge all these things together? Is that fair, Daniel? I think you probably would know better than I would. Yeah, it's still um, a technical concern right now. So it's not really you know, defined, so to speak. Um, just as you mentioned, like how, how would this look like um it's it would arguably look the same across from whatever level you're at until you reach a certain lack of visibility so if you're like six levels deep you'll see theoretically six five things above your level mm -hmm. um so if you get to the very top you're only going to see the one thing where you exist at so there wouldn't be anything below it mm. well there could be opportunity there too it looks like she's already probably collaborating to some degree, but there could be opportunity there to try to find some consistency in sort of the management yeah. of the hierarchical process. I'm curious to see like what happens when it is only like one level deep. It's like how much of a, a map of this hierarchy do you actually need to see, right? It's like, yeah, I'm a small organization with three people. I, why do I need to see something that's, you know, I'm on issue 12 of our in task number one, you know? It seems like um, this is aimed more at enterprise users mm -hmm. with large implementations. Um, arguably, that's that's totally fine, but I'd want to make sure that the feature um, is not just specifically for enterprise use. Um, there has some sort of benefit for anybody, right? 
I'm glad you mentioned that because it does have, sometimes we do have a tendency to maybe overcomplicate things for the smaller organizations while trying to address the needs of the more complex situations associated with enterprise. Well, I know we're a couple minutes over, but anything else anybody wants to touch on today before we wrap up? This was great. Thank you all so much for your feedback on tasks. All right. Have a wonderful holiday, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, same to you all. See you soon. Bye. Bye.